When we first moved into Filman Road, this cat adopted us. And uh, eventually, because we ran out of space, uh, we built a porter cabin for my office. And he took a bit of a shine to me, so we cut a hole in the door. And he stayed with us, well, really, for about 15 years, I guess. But he was known as Chairman Mao. But just it just reminded me of the quite happy times when he was around. And of course, we had no mice, so that was down to him. Andy Phillips, who was the chief electrician at the Royal Court and also did lighting design. He and I got on very well, and I'd always been fascinated as a youngster about lighting anyway. And one night after the show, we just got together and said, hang on, well, why don't we start a lighting company? Which is kind of how it began. So I blew all the money I had on my credit card, much to my mother's annoyance, and um, went out and bought some equipment. And then we formed the company and started using the equipment. And various people joined us along the way, Angela Fox and Rory Dempster and a chap called David Henderson. And so we began and we got a little tiny office around the corner just off uh, Sloan Square and piled the equipment in there and rented it out. And I suppose, as I say, the rest is history, but that's how it actually started. I think we sort of thought, well, we're a bunch of friends, we enjoy what we do, we're passionate about lighting, you know, let's just have fun and do it. I don't think we ever, well, I ever thought that it would grow into what it has become. But I guess if you start any business, that, that in a way, um, you can't stand still. You have to keep moving forward. So it was more equipment, more staff, and new technology, more staff, and so on. So it grows a bit like Mopsy, really. There was certainly no planned structure. I mean, we thought we were going to take over the world. Um, you do when you're young, don't you? I'm amazed when I walk around the warehouse now how, how big it is and the range of equipment and, and what we do is pretty amazing. I guess the happy memories and the best memories are working with colleagues, staff, the collaboration, the the effort, the passion, the fun, those are the good memories really, rather than one particular incident. I think those are the good memories. It's about people rather than technology. And that's not just the staff in the company, that's also colleagues uh, out in the industry who became friends and acquaintances who were using us. You know, those are the good memories really. It depends where the perception is coming from. For me, it's about collaboration, teamwork, I guess, um, and having a continued commitment to do what we do best, which is innovation, looking after the customer, looking after the staff, caring. All those sort of core values, I think, are very much part of what we are. I think it's about people in the end, not about the technology. In fact, I wish many ways the technology had not improved so we wouldn't have to keep spending money. But, but uh, you know, like everything, you've got to keep moving forward. Well, there are actually a number of them. I mean, Rocky, I suppose, when we got the contract to supply the light equipment and the staff for when it moved from the Royal Court, it actually moved to uh, a tiny 300-seater, um, first of all, in the Pheasantry in Chelsea. Uh, it was a cinema, and it was very crudely converted. We bunged in some lighting, but we pretty much left it as it was. Uh, and there was a couple of Nissan huts around the corner for the actors. But it was a very short term, and it was supposed to be for nine months. But suddenly, the owner of the cinema kicked us out, gave us seven days to leave, and we were running the show. And uh, Michael White found this cinema further up the road, King's Road Theatre, and said, guys, you've got seven days to convert it because that's all we've got. We've taken all this money, everybody's come to see the show, but um, now we've got to do it. So we took that on. I mean, converted the whole cinema, dressing rooms, a lot. A lot of work was put in by Michael Work, but we did completely rewired the place, put all the lighting in, all the control systems, all the sound. And that first night was pretty amazing. 
pretty amazing. I'm very proud of that. Uh, again, it was the people who, who made it work. I suppose the next thing was probably a Miss Saigon. I'm not a very good judge of whether a piece of work is going to be good or, or not, but I was a bit worried about the idea of a musical around a war. It didn't sit comfortably with me. But I took huge risks, um, put the, everything on Hock, including my house, to buy the equipment. Um, went the first night and thought, oh dear, dear, dear. I just, but actually the result and the critics and everybody coming out of the theatre thought it was wonderful. So I have to say we breathed a sigh of relief. But it was a pretty momentous decision and a good memory. And then I suppose finally moving here was a good moment in the history of White Light. We've been looking because, as you probably know, we had Filmer Road, but we had something like seven other buildings scattered around Fulham uh, with various departments. The moving light department was one place, the installation was another, and it was becoming a nightmare of logistics. And uh, as many an HGV driver would tell you, Collecting from white light was their worst nightmare, A, backing into a tiny cobbled yard and then having to back into various locations around Fulham. So moving here, uh, and it took us three years, but we made it work. And behind me, there are some pictures of an empty warehouse. Um, and we thought we'd never fill it. How wrong was I? Not only have we filled it, we've taken other, other buildings across the way. but. They were good, good moments in White Light's history. I think it is those core values and it's about the people, it's the team, uh, it's the collaboration and everybody having a passion, I think, to, to do it right and to do it well. Well, I think the most recent, of course, would obviously be Smart Stage, which I think is pretty groundbreaking and uh, amazing technology, uh, just fantastic. Uh, but going back, I guess the creation of the VS effects, which Dave Isherwood sort of re-engineered, was a big groundbreaker in technology. Going further back, I think we probably were more adaptable at finding pieces of kit and making them work for specialist productions or whatever. There was just this willingness of everybody to say, how can we do this? How can we achieve that? Nothing you would say, oh, wow, that's changed the course of our industry. Uh, we've been instrumental in changing it, and particularly with, with our development of a piece of software, which was Modelbox, which was the first software of being able to be drawn on a computer. And we had a landline to Cambridge. We had offices up in the West End, and designers used to go up there and use the system to draw out uh, their plans and I remember the landline to Cambridge because that was the, the only the big enough server to run the software it cost us nine thousand pounds a year for one landline to Cambridge amazing uh, very proud of that and it was bought by the Royal Opera House and quite a few big venues around the UK and abroad and Australia but we just simply didn't have the resource to develop it so of course other software companies took up that initiative. But I'm quite proud of that, uh, that we were the first to develop a software for lighting. My primary interest, I suppose, is theatre, the spoken word, if I'm honest. Um, musicals I like, but I think the technology has enhanced those experiences in, in a way that I don't think any of us ever thought possible in terms of anything from a gobo through to moving lights to special effects to video projection. They're now an integral part of all those mediums of music and dance and opera and drama and, and so on. And corporate events. The technology, I think, has enhanced all of that. You could argue that perhaps it's overdone when you see a big musical. It's all blasts of light and colour and all the rest of it. Fantastic experience, but I think it does enhance the show. Good lighting can't make a bad show good in terms of its content, but it certainly can enhance the experience that the audience has. 
um, in a music concert. Yes, you can sit and listen to a band in, in a dungeon with one spotlight. Fantastic experience. But, you know, you go to a major arena and see the lights and the AV. Fantastic experience. Brilliant. I think it's like anything, you, you have a dream that something might work for you and for whatever industry you're in, uh, and you just go for it. Um, until you try, you won't know. I think you give it your best shot, and if it doesn't work, well, go and have another shot somewhere else. So I would say if you have a passion, go for it. I don't know, I won't be around, but... Uh, <laughs> Human beings are gregarious. Storytelling is part of our nurture. And I think you grow up having stories told. You enjoy that getting together to experience uh, music or drama or whatever it may be. And I can't see that that won't continue. I think it will be more difficult in future to gather people together. But I think we will still want to do it. And I think the technology needs to be there to support that. Why do we have an audience? It's people wanting to get together to experience something in front of them and engage in it and engage with it uh, with other people. But that collective feeling, it's a wonderful feeling when it works. Absolutely wonderful. I think that passion will never, never disappear. So for White Light, I think there is an amazing future. Um, it's already advanced so much in terms of its technology and its innovation, and I think that will continue. I, I hope it does. I'm sure it will. Uh, very exciting times for the next 50 years. I, I, I kind of would like to be looking down and saying, OK, chaps, you've done well.